You're listening to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast. I'm Martin Tyler, and you're listening to Harry Simeon. Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast brought to you by 90 Min. As ever, I'm your host, Harry Simeu. And on this edition, we're going to be looking ahead to that huge UEFA Europa League semi-final clash with Villarreal. It's Arsenal's biggest game of the season. I know we've said that every time a Europa League knockout tie has come along, but it really is because hope of qualifying for Europe via the Premier League group has disappeared in recent weeks and disappointing draw at home to Fulham and then a defeat at the hands of Everton has all but ended that dream. So Arsenal desperate to qualify for Europe for next season for financial reasons. Um, you know, th- this competition, the Euro- Europa League, offers us an opportunity to sneak back into the Champions League, which would have been Mikel Arteta's objective at the start of the season. So Although it's been a really disappointing and frustrating campaign, this competition does offer Arsenal a route towards what they set out to do at the start of the season. So um, hugely, hugely significant uh, couple of games coming up against Unai Emery's side. It's the Unai Emery derby. Of course, Unai Emery was sacked by Arsenal around about 18 months into his tenure. And um, I was somebody who was convinced from quite early on actually that Unai Emery wasn't the right man so for me this game has an added spice and I'm sure it does for all Arsenal fans out there because Unai Emery I think made Arsenal worse and and I know a lot of people will look at where we find ourselves now and say well how can that be but I think the fact that we appointed Unai Emery immediately after Arsene Wenger is largely why we're in this position that we find ourselves in now I think that Arsenal, as a football club, had to get the decision right. Whoever was going to replace Arsene Wenger had a massive task on their hands and it had to be the right man. And unfortunately, as we found out, uh, probably about a year into his Arsenal tenure, Unai Emery was not the right man. He'll be extra motivated. There's no doubt about that. He will feel that his sacking by Arsenal was unfair. Um, And when you look at where Arsenal find themselves now, it's hard to really argue with that in terms of you know, achievements. I mean, Unai Emery went to the Europa League final, but Unai Emery missed out on the top four by just a solitary point. My argument would always be that Unai Emery had a stronger team. I know a lot of people disagree with that, but I think he had more experience. He had players who had been around the club for many, many years. He didn't have to cope with a pandemic. He didn't have to cope with as many injury problems as Mikel Arteta's faced this season. So it's a debate that's worth having, and it's a debate of which I can see both sides. But my personal opinion is that Unai Emery was the wrong man after Arsene Wenger. And that is largely why we're in the position now. So I've kind of got a little bit of fuel in, uh, I've kind of got a bit of fire in my stomach really um, about this tie because I want to stick it to Unai Emery. I really, really do. Um, How have Villarreal been getting on this season? It's a really good question because at the start of the campaign, there was a lot of hype around the job that Unai Emery is doing there. The reality is that in terms of their La Liga performances this season, Villarreal haven't exactly lifted up any trees. You know, they're in a position where they can't qualify for the Champions League. In fact, the top four in La Liga, if I'm not mistaken, have already qualified for the Champions League, which tells you how big a gap there is between those and the rest of the league at the moment. So Unai Emery's Villarreal aren't as great as as they look like they might be at the beginning of the season. They've struggled a little bit. Obviously, you know, what is the aim for Villarreal? They're not a Real Madrid, they're not a Barcelona, they're not even as big as a Valencia, Sevilla, etc, etc. But the the reality is that I think if you speak to people in Spain, they'll be a little bit disappointed with Unai Emery's league campaign. And um, I spent a lot of time researching this and looking into uh, Unai Emery's time at Villarreal. And that was the kind of feeling I got from talking to a few people, from reading some bits and pieces was that his league form has been a little bit underwhelming. Now, they have got plenty of Premier League experience in the side, the likes of Etienne Kepue, who of course was formerly of Spurs and then of Watford. Francis Coquelin, former Arsenal man, is in the Villarreal setup. as is Alberto Moreno, who played at left-back for Liverpool for quite some time. Uh, and one-fourth, the Tottenham defender, is currently playing at right-back 
for Villarreal. So there is plenty, plenty of Premier League experience in Unai Emery's side. In terms of their league form, as I mentioned, it's not been amazing. It's not by any means been disastrous, but they're in seventh at the moment. They've won 12 games, drawn 13, and they've suffered eight defeats. In terms of the players we've got to watch out for, we've got to watch out for Gerard Moreno, who, of course, is Villarreal's top goal scorer. Um, he's been on fire this season. And in terms of La Liga, he's scored 20 goals so far this season. Paco Alcatha is another player that we need to watch out for, of course, uh, spent some time in Borussia Dortmund, but has returned to Spain and is doing really well. And the other threat that has been talked about quite a lot is Samuel Chukwesi, uh, the right winger, who, from what I hear from people, can be quite a frustrating player. And we've got a few of those at Arsenal, haven't we? Where on their day, they can be absolutely brilliant, rapid in terms of his pace, his trickery, all of that is there. But sometimes the final product is missing from Chukwesi. But he's somebody we have to be wary of, in particular if Mikel Arteta is planning on playing Granit Xhaka at left back because the mismatch in terms of their pace and speed along the ground is huge. And I wonder if that will put Mikel Arteta off of continuing with Granit Xhaka at left back. We're going to have to wait and see. And of course, when we get the team news, I'll be doing my predicted lineup or my lineup um, and prediction show. So I look forward to that. For the time being, we're going to just put that on hold because we want to hear the press conferences. We want to get the team news, the updates. You know, will Aubameyang be fit? Will he not? Uh, will Odegaard be ready to start? We're going to have to wait and see. Uh, so plenty of team news to come out from the Arsenal camp before we can make any sort of definitive predictions or judgments on what the starting 11 might be. So I've talked a little bit about Villarreal's overall league performance. And I think what's key to note is that they're not watertight defensively. When Unai Emery was in charge of Arsenal, you know, we hoped, didn't we, when he came in, that somebody who was a little bit more pragmatic than Arsene Wenger, like him, like him would come in and tighten up that defence. And unfortunately for Unai Emery, he wasn't able to do that. And he's not really been able to do that at Villarreal either. They're still conceding goals. And from what I've watched and what I've been listening to um, and read, you know, they play with... Uh, kind of like a 4-4-2 system, but it's with a double six position, right? So what that means is the two central midfielders, they sit deep. They're not like two box-to-box -box midfielders. They will sit in front of that back four. And that gives the wingers a bit more license to get forward without worrying too much about what's behind them because they have that basis of a, a midfield duo sitting behind them in order to help out the back four. So that's the way I think that Villarreal are going to line up. I think it's going to be Gerard Moreno and Paco Alcaza up top. I think that Chukwese is going to play from one of the flanks. It'll be interesting to see what they do in defence. Uh, they've got some, some really experienced players back there, but a couple of the weaknesses that have been highlighted to me uh, by a Villarreal uh, fan are the fullback positions. One Foyth is playing at right back currently. And quite frankly, I'm not sure if he is a right back. You know, the, we've seen him play for Spurs historically as a centre back. And I just wonder if he's mobile enough, if he is press resistant enough to cope at, with playing at right back against a side like Arsenal. So we're going to have to wait and see. But uh, Juan Foyth is a, is a player I would be targeting as is. Alberto Moreno on the left, if indeed he does play. Now, Moreno played in a game at the weekend against Barcelona. Doesn't mean 100% that he will play on Thursday. But if he does, Alberto Moreno showed what he's all about during his time in the Premier League. Very good at getting forward. Very quick up and down the touchline. But has a defensive mistake in him and isn't particularly good when it comes to his defensive positioning. So I feel like if Arsenal are going to hurt Villarreal, the two players and the two positions I'll be looking to attack are the wide position. And that bodes well because Arsenal, you know, have the likes of Bukayo Saka. I'd hope to see Nicola Pepe start uh, from the left-hand side. And if he does, I'd back him uh, to beat one fourth all day long. So I think that Arsenal have the, the ability, the capabilities to hurt Villarreal in those positions. And I very much look forward to seeing how Mikel Arteta goes about it. I think, you know, this season, you know, we're seeing Premier League clubs doing very, very well in Europe. Obviously, Tottenham were knocked out by Dinamo Zagreb in the last round. But Manchester United are in the semi-finals. Arsenal, of course, also in the semi-finals. You look at the Champions League. Chelsea got a very good result in Madrid last night. Of course, uh, Manchester City take on Paris Saint-Germain tonight as well. So um, 
you know, there, there's been some good performances from the English sides. And I think a lot of that comes down to the intensity at which the Premier League is played. Now, I do believe that the Premier League's level has dropped as a sort of as a consequence of the pandemic. I think without fans in the stadium, we've seen a very different game here in the UK. But what we what we do see is we see a greater aggression and a greater tempo than what we see in the likes of La Liga. And I think that as a Premier League club, I think that if you impose yourself physically on on the likes of Villarreal, I think you can you can overcome them. I think it's really important to do that, to impose ourselves physically, to play with the kind of tempo that they won't be used to facing week in, week out, uh, to be physical, to get stuck in. I know it sounds like I'm, I'm rolling off a load of cliches, but I genuinely do believe that's the way to beat somebody like Villarreal. They've struggled at times this season to deal with a high press, to deal with an aggressive press. They like to play the ball out from the back, as most Spanish teams do. And they've come unstuck often doing that. So I would like to see Arsenal, um, you know, really, really start the game like a house on fire, really aggressively. And you look at Villarreal's midfield and, you know, if it is going to be, for example, Capoue, um and Danny Parejo, for example, you know, Parejo's a, a fantastic technical player. But is he physical enough to face a Premier League midfield? You, this is a game you want to see Thomas Partey really dominate. And if it is going to be uh, Ceballos in midfield alongside him, he has to be aggressive too. And we really need to see Arsenal closing people down, getting people's faces. Because I do believe Arsenal's. if Arsenal turn up, if Arsenal half turn up, if Arsenal are at, you know, are at 50% of their, their maximum and can avoid the bad mistakes, then Arsenal are a better side than Villarreal and I expect us to progress. But I am a little bit concerned about our home form going into this tie. Our home form this season has been really bad. And I, and I do feel like if we are going to progress here, it's imperative that we get a good result in Spain. How am I feeling in terms of confidence going into the game? I am quite confident because I know that this Arsenal team are capable. I know that they are a better side than Villarreal on their day. Unfortunately, we've had too many off days this season and that's why we find ourselves where we do in the Premier League. But I genuinely do believe that Arsenal are a much stronger side than Villarreal. And if both sides play at their maximum, Arsenal should win this. Uh, you know, if both sides are at 75%, Arsenal should win this. If Arsenal are, f uh, are at 50%, 30% and Villarreal are at the top of their game, then we stand every chance of being beaten. So when I think about Villarreal as a as a team in my mind, what is my initial thoughts? My initial thoughts from, from doing the research that I've done over the last couple of days is this. Villarreal on their day can give anybody a game, but they're not good enough that if they're on your their game and you're on your game, they're definitely going to beat you. You know, so if Arsenal can cut out the mistakes, if Arsenal can be somewhere close to the top of their game, then there is no reason why Arsenal should not be uh, heading back to the Emirates for the second leg with a positive result in the bag. So I think, you know, for this for this team, this group, this manager, it's do or die in the Europa League right now. Personally, I don't think Mikel will be sacked regardless of what happens in the Europa League. I think he'll start next season as the Arsenal boss. But I know there are a lot of Arsenal fans out there who want him who will want him gone if he fails to navigate us through this tie. And whilst I disagree with that view, I, I understand it. I, I really do. The league form is has been, you know, anything but acceptable. And and we're looking at a team in Villarreal that we should theoretically get past. I think the fact that Unai Emery knows this group so well and has worked with so many of these players obviously levels the playing field to a degree and is something that, you know, that can help Villarreal. But there's always that danger of, of a manager coming up against his former side and maybe overthinking it and focusing too much on the weaknesses of his former side. So much so that his own game gets lost a little bit. So I do wonder how Unai Emery is going to deal with this. Will he say... This is what I know about Arsenal. This is how we're going to approach it. This is how we stop this player. This is how we stop that player. Or will Unai Emery um, have that in mind, but focus largely on Villarreal's own game? I think Villarreal, uh, I think Unai Emery, sorry, 
in years gone by has been too pragmatic at times. And I hope that is the case again uh, this week, because if Unai Emery's Villarreal sit back, I would back Arsenal uh, to break them down over the course of the 90 minutes on Thursday, because as I say, they are by no means watertight. Does it mean it's not going to be a difficult tie? It's a semi-final. It's a huge occasion for both clubs. And I expect Villarreal to be up for it. But as I say, I am confident that if Arsenal are anywhere near their level, they should pick up a positive result and take it back to the Emirates next Thursday and get the job done and set up that Europa League final against probably Manchester United. But of course, Roma also uh, pose tricky opposition for them. Let me know how you think this one is going to go. Let me know uh, your thoughts on sort of the insight I provided you into Villarreal. Did you enjoy it? Um, is there anything you'd like to add? I know a lot of you watch uh, Spanish football probably quite a lot more than I do. I am a, a Serie A man outside of the Premier League, so um, I'm not going to sit and pretend that I watch Villarreal every week. But I've spent, as I say, uh, a good few hours over the last couple of days doing some research, looking into uh, what they're good at, what they're bad at, and trying to work out how Arsenal can uh, can gain the advantage against Unai Emery's side. So it is the Unai Emery derby. It is a huge, huge game for Arsenal, for Mikel Arteta, and of course for Unai Emery. So you can expect an entertaining encounter. Don't forget, you can catch me a little bit later on for another stream. And of course, you can catch me uh, on the live watch along of the game against Villarreal. So very much looking forward to bringing you that as well. It brought us good luck in the game against Slavia Prague and we had a great time. So fingers crossed we can repeat that on Thursday. Until then, take care. Smash the like button if you haven't done so already. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Leave your comments. If you're listening via the audio, make sure you leave us a review and I'll catch you all very, very soon. Cheers.